Ecosystems and water. So let's talk about conditions underwater. Well, aquatic organisms that live in the ocean or any water are affected primarily by the water's depth, the temperature of the water, the flow of the water, and the amount of dissolved nutrients like oxygen, nitrogen, and other elements. Now, water depth strongly influences life because sunlight only penetrates a short distance through the water. And the area where sunlight penetrates and allows for photosynthesis to happen is called the photic zone. So here we have photic, and photic means is referring to light, and we know that organisms use sunlight for photosynthesis. Now in the tropical seas, the photic zone can be around 200 meters deep, but only a few meters deep in lakes or swamps. And when we look at lakes or swamps, we know that there's all kinds of other things in there and that lakes and swamps are not as clear as the ocean is. That's why it's only a few meters deep in lakes or swamps. Now below the photic zone, where there is not enough light for photosynthesis to occur, we have the aphotic zone, meaning not light. This is where photosynthesis cannot occur. Now, many aquatic organisms live on or in rocks and sediments on the bottom of rivers, lakes, and oceans. And we call these aquatic organisms benthos, and their habitat is called the benthic zone. If the water is shallow for benthos, and those are the aquatic organisms living on or in rocks and sediments on the bottom of rivers, lakes, and oceans, if the water is shallow enough for those organisms to be in the photic zone, then photosynthetic autotrophs populate. If it's below the photic zone, then chemosynthetic autotrophs populate. So photosynthetic, they're going to use the sun's light, photosynthesis, and then chemosynthetic, they're going to use other, uh, they're going to use chemicals to make their own food, such as uh, sulfur coming out of the uh, volcanic vents. All right, temperature and currents. The water is warmer near the equator than the poles, just like the land is. Water depth also plays a factor. The deeper the water. The colder it is, the warmer the water, the less deep it is, the more shallow it is. And that's because warm water will rise and cold water will sink. Now, currents can affect ocean temperature because it can carry warm water or cooler water to areas that aren't typical for the latitude or region that it is in. Now, aquatic organisms and all life need nutrients to survive. Now, these nutrients are oxygen, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. And the type and availability of these dissolved substances vary within and between bodies of water, affecting the types of organisms that can live there. Freshwater ecosystems. There's two slides for this one. Now, freshwater ecosystems can be divided into three main categories, rivers and streams, lakes and ponds, and freshwater wetlands. So let's start with rivers and streams. Rivers, streams, and or brooks often originate, means come from, underground water sources. Now, near the source, water has plenty of dissolved oxygen, but little nutrients. You're not going to find many plants there at the source. Now, further downstream, sediments settle, so you will find plant life. There's those nutrients there. That's what they're talking about when they say the sediments. Now, further downstream, the river may meander, and that means twist and curve through flatlands, where you can find animals who need that fresh water to survive. And then, let's talk about lakes and ponds. Food webs and lakes are based on plankton includes both phytoplankton and zooplankton, and water typically flows in and out of lakes and ponds, circulating heat, oxygen, and nutrients. All right, let's finish up the other one. Freshwater wetlands. Now, a wetland is an ecosystem in which water either covers the soil or is present at or near the surface for at least part of the year. Now, wetlands are often nutrient-rich and serve as breeding grounds for many organisms, and that's because they are nutrient-rich. There's lots of nutrients to be found. Now, wetlands purify water by filtering pollutants, help prevent flooding by absorbing large amounts of water, and slowly releasing those large amounts of water that it absorbs throughout the uh, seasons. Now, there are three main types of wetlands. There's freshwater bogs, freshwater marshes, and freshwater swamps. Now, there's a special type of uh, wetland, and it's called an estuary. And if the wetland has salt in its salt water, it's called an estuary. Now, an estuary is a special kind of wetland where the river meets the sea. That's why it has salt water. It contains a mix of fresh water and salt water. Many are shallow where sunlight reaches the benthos, which use the sunlight for photosynthesis. Now, estuaries serve as spawning or nursery grounds for many ecologically and commercially important fish and shellfish species, including bluefish, striped bass, shrimp, and crabs. Salt marshes are temperate estuaries characterized by salt 
tolerant grasses above the low tide line. If you sprinkle salt on your yard, the grass is going to die. But here at the salt marshes, we have grass that is salt tolerant. It can tolerate the salt water. It will not die. Mangrove swamps are tropical estuaries characterized by several species of salt tolerant trees. So here we have trees growing in salt water, not dying. That's because they're salt tolerant. So salt marshes are, have grass, salt tolerant grass, and mangrove swamps have salt tolerant trees. Now, where's the largest mangrove area in the United States? And that'd be the Everglades right here in Florida. All right, marine ecosystems. So ecologists typically divide the ocean into zones based on depth and distance from shore, and they've made it very easy to understand. The more you spend time with this, uh, with these words, the easier it becomes to uh, understand. So we have the intertidal zone, the keyword being uh, tidal, meaning tide. Organisms are exposed to waves and extreme temperature change as the tide changes from low to high tide or high to low. Now here, barnacles and algae attach themselves to rocks. When the tide comes in, they're covered by the water. When the tide goes out, they're exposed to the sun. That's where the extreme temperature changes come from. Then we have the coastal ocean. Extends from the low tide mark to the outer edge of the continental shelf. Now here, areas are brightly lit and is often supplied by nutrients from freshwater runoff from land. So you talk about the coast. Not going too far, just going from the low tide mark to the outer edge of the continental shelf. So all that sediment running off land is going to go into the ocean. And that's where it's often supplied by nutrients. Then we have the open ocean. And more than 90% of the ocean is open ocean. The depth starts about 500 meters and ranges to over 10,000 meters along the trenches. The open ocean is divided into the photic and aphotic zone. Now photic meaning light, aphotic meaning no light. So we have the photic zone. Open ocean has the low nutrient levels, so it supports a small species of phytoplankton. It occurs in the top 100 meters of the ocean. And the reason it occurs in the top 100 meters of the ocean, remember, sunlight only goes to about 200 meters deep in the ocean. And the photic zone is part of the open ocean. And then we have the aphotic zone, which is also part of the open ocean. And here in the dark, food webs are supported by autotrophs using chemosynthesis using those chemicals to make their own food not sunlight or they're feeding on organic matter that dies in the photic zone and fall for example if we have a giant fish swimming or a giant shark swimming through the photic zone and it dies it's going to sink to the bottom of the ocean and then you have all these organisms that are going to feed off that shark that has uh, died frigid temperatures and high pressure lead scientists to think that this area was without life but scientists are finding new life here all the time and new discoveries are being made every day that's it for this one if you have any questions feel free to post a comment or and you can always email us we'll see you guys next time